Hi everyone, and welcome to another Heroes and Bosses painting video. This time I'm going to be painting a black orc from Games Workshop's Blood Bowl. These miniatures require a little extra work to get ready since they have to be cut from a sprue and then attached with glue. One piece of advice I can give if you've never cut miniatures from a sprue is to always use wire cutters to cut around the miniature first. This way you can avoid any unnecessary bending or twisting in the miniature. Now at this point I'm attaching all the parts of the miniature except for the head. This is going to make painting the inside of the mouth and the shoulders a lot easier. To prime the miniature, I'm going to attach the orc's head to a pencil using white tack. I'm also going to stick some white tack on the attachment point on the orc's body. So to start off, I'm going to be using Army Painter's Uniform Grey to prime the miniature. Next, I'm going to paint the inside of the mouth using a dark pink. I'm going to be using Army Painter's Pure Red and Citadel's Ceramite White for this mix. Throughout the video, you're going to see some colors that are in brackets. Those are the Citadel equivalents to some of the Army Painter paints that I'm going to be using. Next I'm going to shade the inside of the mouth using a 50-50 mix of Reichland Flesh Shade and Carolberg Crimson. For the orc's skin, I've decided to go with Deathworld Forest. And of course we want to remember to paint the face of our orc as well. For the orc shirt, I'm going to be using Skaven Blight Dinge. There are a few pieces of the shirt that are showing through at the front of the miniature. One that's hard to notice is at the orc's right thigh. I'm also painting this color in between the individual plates that are hanging from the orc's waist. For the pants, I'm going to be using a 50-50 mix of Carrick Stone and Army Painter's Brain Matter Beige. Brain Matter Beige is just an ivory color, so you could get away with just using a pure white. Now, I didn't put down a white base color for this, so it's going to take two or three coats to get a nice even finish. use the same color mix to paint the teeth of the orc. The last color I'm going to use before I reattach the head is P3's Pig Iron. This is one way in which you can differentiate your characters. There are two black orcs with a set. For the second black orc, I'll probably paint more of the areas with a pig iron. For this one, however, I'll be painting most of his armored plates with red. Basically anything that looks like a spike, a blade, or has been bolted onto the armor is going to get a silver finish. When painting the spikes and the blades, I'm not too worried about getting any straight lines. I'm trying to give the impression that the blades and spikes were once painted red, but the paint has been chipped away from use. Now that the hardest to reach areas have been painted, we can reattach the head. For all the remaining armor plates, I'm going to be using Mephiston Red.
For all the leather straps, I've decided to go with Mornfang Brown. I'm also using this color to paint the straps that are going around the orc's forearm. Now that I've got the red on, I'm going to switch back to the pig iron and pick out all the small metal details I skipped. At this point though, I won't be painting any of the small rivets. I'm going to be saving that as one of the final touches. For the final base color, I'm going to be using Ushabdi Bone for the Orc's Claws. Once that's done, I'm going to move on to the shading. I've decided to do all my shading with Agrax Earthshade or with a combination of Agrax and one other color. By adding the Agrax Earthshade, it should create a nice grimy look for everything. To start off, I'm going to be using a pure Agrax Earthshade, and I'm going to be using this in all the leather straps, his pants, and his teeth. For all the silver parts of the miniature, I'm going to be using a 1 to 1 mix of Agrax Earthshade and Nuln Oil. I'm going to use the same mix of shade on the Orc's shirt. For all the flesh, I'm going to be using a mix of Agrax Earthshade and Bealtan Green. I'm also going to use this mix for the entire orc's hand, including his claws. The final wash is a mix of Agrax and Carolberg Crimson, and I'm going to be using this for all the red parts of the miniature. That completes all of our shading, now I'm going to move on to highlighting. First, however, I'm going to paint the orc's eye using Mephiston Red. And after I finish that, I'm going to add a tiny dot of Fire Dragon Bright to the center of it. Still using my Mephiston Red, I'm now going to repaint all of the armor plates. While I'm doing this, I'm trying to avoid all the places where the plates connect to each other, or where there's any cracks in the metal. And I'm also going to avoid painting the underside of any of the red plates, leaving those parts dark. Once that's dried, I'm going to switch to Army Painter's Pure Red. If you don't have this, you can also use Citadel's Evil Sun Scarlet. So all I'm doing at this point is creating an edge highlight for all the red plates.
For any really rough areas, such as the right shoulder pad and the helmet, I'm going to switch to a dry brush instead. I'm also going to dry brush the tops of the shoulders just to increase their overall brightness. Next I'm going to switch to Stormhost Silver, and with this I'm going to provide an edge highlight for all the blades, and I'm going to highlight the tips of all the spikes. I'm also using this to create an edge highlight on the metal plates on his shoulders and on his boots. Once that's done, I'm then going to highlight all the rings that are holding his armor together and all the tiny rivets scattered throughout the miniature. For the skin, I'm going to start with a reapplication of our Death World Forest, and we're just trying to avoid the deepest creases in his skin and in between his fingers. The one part of the flesh I won't be painting with this, however, is the face. For the next layer on the skin, I'm going to switch to a 50-50 mix of Ogren Camo and Death World Forest. Using this, I'm going to put the first highlight on the face, and I'm just trying to avoid spilling it into any of the deep grooves. Once the face is done, I'm going to switch to the rest of the body. I'm going to start by painting the top surfaces of the skin, including the raised ridges on his fingers and the tops of his hands. I'm also using this to paint the surface of the muscles that are facing upward. For the final highlight, I'm going to switch to a pure ogre in camo, and using this I'm going to highlight the nose and the cheekbones of the orc, along with the tops of his knuckles. Next I'm going to do the pants and the teeth, and I'm going to start off by a reapplication of our one-to-one -one mix of Brain Matter Beige and Carrick Stone. For the final highlight on the teeth and the pants, I'm going to be using a pure brain matter beige. And with this, I'm just focusing on a very small area, the tops of the folds and the pants, and on the tips of his teeth. For the orc shirt, I'm going to start by reapplying the Skaven Blight Dinge. And once again, while I'm doing this, I'm just trying to avoid painting too close to the areas where the shirt meets a belt or a piece of armor. Next, I'm going to mix in an equal amount of Filthy Suit by Army Painter. And then I'm going to water this down and put a few layers over the raised folds in the shirt. I'm also going to paint the tops of the shoulders because even though these parts are flat, they would be receiving a lot of sunlight. For the belts and straps, I'm only going to be doing one layer of highlight, and for this, I'm going to be mixing an equal amount of Morn Fang Brown with XV88. And I'm only using this to provide an edge highlight for all the leather work. Once this part is done, we're ready to apply our decals. I won't be showing it in this video, but I will be showing it in a video in the future if you're interested. Now once the decals are on, they look too clean, so I've put a layer of Lamian Median over top of them, and now I'm going to use some Mephiston Red to apply some battle damage. So I'm going around the edge of the decal with my paintbrush, and I'm putting small dabs of red paint over the white to make it look like the white paint has been chipped away. 
So next I'm going to do my base. I'm going to first put down a layer of glue and then put on some Citadel sand. Next I'm going to paint the base using some watered down Steel Legion drab. I'm also going to take some of this mix and splash it on the boots of the orc and around the bottom of his pants and the bottom of his armor. For the rim of the base I'm going to go with a pure black, in this case Army Painter's Dead Black. Once that's done, I'm going to provide a dry brush of Carrick Stone over the sand. To apply the final decal to the back of the miniature, I'm first going to paint the entire rim with a layer of art coat. Once that's dry, I'm going to apply the decal and then I'm going to put another layer of art coat all the way around the rim. Once everything's completely dry, I'm then going to spray the entire miniature with a layer of matte varnish. Next I'm just going to put some paint around randomly on the top of the sand and then I'm going to put on some citadel grass. The final step for this miniature is just to apply some blood to its bladed knuckles. I'm also going to splash a little bit onto his hand and his armor. So here's our finished product. I hope you enjoyed this video and thank you very much for watching.